Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Blue Maxima and I'm here talking to the wall again. It's been a little while since the last one and I do apologise for that, but last week was just kind of insane due to the whole Christmas thing and just everything kind of made it difficult and there was no news whatsoever. So there was really nothing worth talking about, which is why I skipped it last week. But thankfully, thanks to the fact that now I've now got two weeks of news, we actually have a fair bit to talk about, which is nice. So, first thing I want to do is thank my patrons as always. Thanks to Alan, Billy, Blizz, Brett, Caleb, Chen, Christoph, David, Edia, Eric, Gary, Joey, the other Joey, Christopher, Matthew, Miguel, Mike, Mathaldu, Rodrigo, Sack Chief, and Z for their support. If you want to support me, the links and instructions to do so are down in the description as always. So, there wasn't that much in the way of Vita news this week. There is one new game, but it's Pick a Pick's Colors. Now, for those of you who have a decent memory, you'll remember there was another Pick a Pick's game by the name of... Oh, bloody hell, I've gone the wrong... I've got the wrong way around. Uh, Pick a Pick's Colors is the one that was already out. Pick a, Pick -a Pick's Pieces is the new one. And the basic difference between it and the old one is that instead of doing individual puzzles, you do puzzles on this big grid, and when you fill in all the puzzles, they make these gigantic color pictures. That's pretty much the entire point of it. I don't see the point in doing a look at it, because frankly, it's going to be almost identical to Pick a Pick's pieces. So, you know, if you if you like Pie Cross, Pick a Pick's isn't that bad at all, so you might as well go for it. There were also a couple of physical releases announced. I don't have the exact list on me because honestly I could care less about physical releases. But I believe one of the big ones that was announced was Super Meat Boy. Although they don't have a date for it yet. Uh, that's pretty much it in all honesty. I'm kind of happy I stopped doing Vita Weekly updates just because there's literally nothing to talk about in them anymore. I'd literally be doing a clip saying, hey, this one game came out this week and then that'd be pretty much it. So... You know, I think I quit at the right time. Like, it probably would have been better to quit like a year ago, but at the same time, I quit before things became really stagnant. So, you know, that's a thing. The game in the background is Skate 3 on the PlayStation 3 emulator RPCS3. I've owned three copies of this game. One on 360 and two on PS3. And in all three cases... The disc has just gone bust within a couple of months. That I don't know why, but that's just how it works with me. The, um, the, the discs are just fragile for some reason. I do not know why. I absolutely love Skate 3, but for whatever bloody reason, it just refuses to work probably for longer than a couple of months on discs. So they recently got it to playable on RPCS3, which is they were able to get all the way through to end-to-end -end with very little bugs, and I've been... I've been wanting to check it out, so this will be me checking it out. So let's go on to the news, shall we? The biggest one, or at least the biggest kick in the pants this week, was that Alien Blackout was finally announced. We might remember a few weeks ago when the Game Awards was about to happen that Alien Blackout was being teased as a proper sequel to Alien Isolation, a game that I own but didn't play much just due to lack of interest. It, it was basically a stealth em up more or less. You just... You try and get through the ship that you're on while avoiding the alien. Very clever idea for usage of the alien IP, I'll give them that much. And they got good reviews for it. So, you know, they're, you know, good concept, well executed, apparently. And Alien Blackout just turned out, according to what I've read, I might get this a little bit wrong, but from the couple of things I've read on it, it's basically Five Nights at Freddy's Alien Edition. On a mobile phone. Yeah, they, after Diablo Immortal, oh god, I cannot imagine how bad it would have been for those guys thinking, oh shit, we probably don't want to put this out at a very specific time, but we probably don't want to put this out now, just in case people get really mad with us, but yeah, they kind of had to at some point. I feel so bad for them. Like, it's Five Nights at Freddy's Alien Edition on a phone, and you know what? As much as people might hate that concept, relatively appropriate when you think about it. I mean, it's basically just trying to keep the alien in a small sort of area on a ship, or just at least trying to keep it from finding you. 
in a Five Nights at Freddy style might actually be pretty engaging. It, it seems like a pretty reasonable way to do that concept. So, you know, I'm not for or against it, but at the same time, they also put it on mobile, and I'm my phone right now is a $100 piece of crap, and my tablet is a 2013 Nexus 7 model. So I literally won't be able to play it either way. So yeah, that's, I admit that's kind of unfortunate and it's a neat idea, but at the same time, one can definitely argue that people were asking for a sequel to Isolation for ages. Although apparently uh, Sega and Creative Assembly, the people who made Alien Isolation have absolutely nothing to do with this. So it's entirely Fox and Disney's fault at this point, but yeah. They also announced an MMO on the down low. That one I don't get. What, what, why? How does Alien translate to MMO? I do not understand in the slightest. It's bizarre to me, thoroughly bizarre. Nevertheless, we shall move on. Destiny is now completely owned by Bungie. At least that's what the reports have said this morning. Um, the, they apparently are publishing and working entirely on Destiny on their own now, instead of being hogtied by Activision to do their bidding. Too little too late, as far as I'm concerned. The Destiny 2 was just more Destiny, but they just kept doing stupid shit and upsetting the player base and... Honestly, I felt like I'd been wasting my time with the uh, original Destiny, which is why I didn't pick up Destiny 2 when I got it free on a Humble Bundle. I still haven't played it. So, yeah, I feel like it's a little bit too little too late. They might have had the opportunity to fix it back when Destiny 2 came out, but I'm guessing Activision just kind of got sick of their shit and dumped them. So now it'll be interesting to see where they go next with Destiny, with Activision not backing them. Will they try and make Destiny 2 last as long as possible, or will they take what little money they have and put it into Destiny 3 and try and do it the way they really wanted to do it, instead of being, you know, instead of Activision being at their back and call, the, um, Activision being, um, making them be at their back and call the entire time. It'll be interesting to see just how things change. I, I can't help but wonder just how much of Destiny's game design was corporate mandated by Activision. We don't know, and... Chances are we'll never know, but at the same time, we might be able to tell, judging by what happens to Destiny over the next few months. And considering this, coming as someone who was actually really looking forward to Destiny back when the beta first was a thing, at the same time, I am kind of looking forward to seeing what they do with it. So there we go. Speaking of Activision, or at the very least, Activision Blizzard. Some guy named Jules was apparently, like, uh, some guy, some guy named Jules was apparently called a racist by one of his women managers. Something along the lines of, um, oh my god, this was ridiculous. Uh, you're Mexican, so you're predetermined to be a sexist or something like that? I don't know. Like, I read the entire twit longer, and even keeping in mind that the, um, you know, it's just one side of the story we're hearing here. He sounds like a crazy person. Everybody in this story sounds like an ass. It's kind of impressive just how bad this went. And even after reading the comments, it was kind of insane. Like, there's, there's this kind of this thing in games where, uh, at least on the more progressive sides of the internet, it'll always be put the woman first. For some reason, I don't know why, even if they have, like, no proof of their story whatsoever. It's been a thing for years, especially with that whole Ellie thing, which we'll get into shortly. But the whole thing was, um, just women come first, except for when it's a man who's having sexism done to him by a, uh, racism done to him by a woman. And then it just splits right down the middle for some reason. I, I, it, it's a complete and utter cluster. And it's just a complete, it's completely batshit example of just how bloody strange the game industry is. Where someone comes out accusing someone of sexism and apparently it depends on the genitalia they have whether or not they're taken completely seriously by everyone on the internet. It's bizarre. And again, we have the uh, Ellie situation where there was a bloody Overwatch 
pro player who literally came out of nowhere, somehow got into like the top fi uh, top 50 or something like that. It was like a really high position from out of nowhere and basically had no time on her account whatsoever. People were suspicious to say the least. And eventually it turned out that Ellie wasn't real and was actually another like top 50 player doing a social experiment. But of course, all the left-leaning progressive gang journalists immediately jumped to this fake woman's defense without even doing any research whatsoever. And within hours, they had egg on their face because it turned out she was fake. It's just blows my mind how this shit can happen these days. And all it does is make women look worse. All it does is make women have a harder time in the industry because everybody was jumping to the, the defense of this fake woman who turned out to be a top 50 player. I don't even know. It, this industry is got a lot of bullshit going on at the moment. Let's go on to some less positive news. Dirty Bomb has gone 100% free because they're not working on the game anymore. And that's an absolute disappointment because... Well, I liked Enemy Territory Quake Wars, but I didn't like Dirty Bomb. Can't tell you what I didn't like Dirty Bomb. I'm pretty sure it was something to do with the game, with the fact the game had a massive skill ceiling. And when I popped in to try it out, I just got flattened for two hours before I'm like, screw this, uninstall. Kind of disappointing in that way. So they have literally removed all the microtransactions from the game. They've tripled your credit rate. And they've made it so that you can buy everything in with regular credits. And that's basically the death knell of the game if I've ever seen one. Because there is no way they are coming back from that. That is an absolute admittance that they are going down. And they are dead in the water. Which is, again, disappointing. I, I kind of wonder, what is splash damage up to right now, the developers? So um, if I just look up their um, Wikipedia page... They are currently working on... Huh. I honestly can't see. They must be working on something like Gears of War... Yeah, okay. They're working on Gears of War 5 and Gears Tactics. For the multiplayer, apparently? Okay. That's, um, that's slightly disappointing because it's Gears of War. You can only do Gears of War one way. So... Yeah, I'm, I've got to admit I'm disappointed. Uh, I was hoping for another something along the lines of Enemy Territory Quake Wars, but I guess we won't be getting that. Now, this isn't something that's particularly interesting on its own, but I just wanted to talk about this because it seems like there's a bunch of random games across platforms that seem to do this, and I'm having trouble finding the ratio of what this is. So, Monster Boy in the Cursed Kingdom, which is a sort of sequel to Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap, made by the same people, I think, and it has an 8 to 1 ratio on the Switch. Everybody's been buying it on the Switch, and this seems to be a relatively, like, interesting phenomenon, because this happens a lot on different platforms. Like, you'll see certain games get a huge ratio of sales on one platform and then everything else will just get ignored. Like, um, I believe uh, the Vita version of a couple of games ended up having some really high sales in their favor. I'm just curious as to what is the cause of this sort of thing and why? I'm guessing it's probably because Monster Boy is portable on the Switch and therefore everybody would want it on the Switch instead of everything else. And I, I'm guessing the Switch just appears to be the most interesting platform just because you can pick it up and take it with you on the go at this point. Who knows? I just thought that was interesting to mention, especially in the sense that there are a lot of games like that. The Dreams beta has come out, except that it's not actually, like, public yet. It's um, currently under NDA, so it's very hard to see anything that the people themselves have not streamed. But they have been putting out some pretty good stuff, according to some of the stream. There's been lots of games coming out uh, showing off all the capabilities of the platform, especially including the ability to take models and stuff from some people, import it into your own levels, and then use it in your own levels. And even after the first couple of weeks, they've been doing some pretty damn amazing sort of things. I, not, not, I can't particularly mention anything here, but... There are just some interesting level designs, like uh, the ability to rewind and fast forward time. There's been this full, there's been this clip of this practical full first person shooter that 
that's been running around. And even just after a couple of weeks, this stuff is impressive. Apparently, the next round of beta invites is going out sometime this week, and I have signed up for it. So I'm hoping there'll be some interesting stuff there. Although, chances are, if I do get into it, I won't be able to talk about it. But, yeah, I know this story has more or less been uh, Dreams doing really positively right now. But, yeah, it's that's a thing. Let's end the news of this week with a funny story. So Soldier Boy did start selling his consoles a while back, and by consoles I mean he literally just got something shipped to his house, rebranded it, and shipped it out to everybody else for double the price. And he's getting sued. Nintendo has thoroughly stepped in and put their foot down because the consoles, quote unquote, were basically just Chinese plug and, pl plug and plays with a bunch of uh, ROMs from consoles. That, um, from old consoles, like the NES, the SNES, the Genesis, a uh, couple of arcade ones on those as far as I'm aware, because I was watching the, um, whatchamacallit, the re-res video on it, and that's basically all it is. So yeah, he's getting the pants sued off him, and that is a good thing, because no one else would be able to get away with this shit, why should he? Kind of interesting, I can't help wonder if those consoles will end up being slightly worth more money later on just because there were so few of them managed to make it out of the uh, out I say out of the factory with gigantic finger quotes fingers so big they could crush my house still I, I just thought that was a bit of a funny story and it's finally over I don't know why anyone would actually go to the effort of buying them except to laugh at it like the three videos I saw were of Jontron who played the console but didn't actually show any of it on screen. There was this one guy who bought it entirely to, sl to smash it, and then the re-res video, which ap apparently just bought the cheaper Chinese version and did a video on that instead. So, of all the videos I could find of people actually getting the thing, only one of them played it, and it wasn't even the Soldier Play one. <laughs> which is actually kind of amazing. And there's one other news thing that came out that literally just happened today. But, uh, well, yeah, uh, the big story of this specific day is that Catherine Classic has come out on Steam, which is it's the original game. I have bought it, and I plan on doing a video on it, along with the rest of my upcoming videos. Alright, so apparently this week, uh, this month, I should say, is massively popular for Japan lovers, because goddamn... We have Tales of Vesperia, which I have a copy of on my GPD Win 2, and I'm going to try it out at some point today. We have Catherine Classic, again, which I have. We have Onimusha Warlords coming out at the end of the week. We have Senran Kaguru Renewal coming out in a week or so. We have Ace Combat 7 coming out this time next week, according, at least in this recording. Then we have Resident Evil 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3 at the end of the month. Both of which I want to get. Now, I haven't played through Resident Evil 1 or 2 before, so Resident Evil 2 will be fresh for me. And the only experience I have with Kingdom Hearts is that PCP lecture on YouTube, which is three hours long, and the best part of the entire video is him saying, if you want to get into this game for the story, stop right there, don't do that. And this is literally after three hours of him explaining the bloody story, which is fantastic. But I do want to... Get both of them, and I already have Vesperia, Catherine, Ace Combat, Unimusha, and Senran Kagura. I will be trying to do videos on all of them. I will give it my best attempt. I promise nothing, but to be fair, I bought every one of those except Catherine Classic with PlayAsia credits. So they are going to need to come out at some point in the near future. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing them a I'm going to be doing a very bad thing to them. So yeah, my next few weeks are going to be packed. I do also have some other videos backed up. I have videos of Dead Cells, Monolith, and I think it was the two Space and Base Extreme games. I Yeah, that's those are the four videos I have at the moment as backups. So I also have a couple of Vita videos that I could probably just put out and apologize to the patrons for not having them at the beginning because I've had them on my patron for six months and still haven't managed to put them out yet. Yeah, um, it's still going to be busy either way, so, yeah, look forward to all of those. I'll be trying to deal with them roughly in release order, but, you know, Tales of Vesperia is probably going to be a long one just on the surface of it, because it's a Tales of game. 
I've been talking to an old friend of mine on Twitter who said something along the lines of, if you don't like Vesperia, Tails is not for you. So I'm going to be holding him to that. I'm going to be trying that one out rather thoroughly. My only experience with um, Tails is Tales of Hearts R, which I wasn't too impressed by. I thought it was a bit generic, but otherwise decent. And I played like an hour of Tales of Symphonia a couple of months ago, but I had to stop doing that just due to time constraints. So... There you go. I, I do also, I all, have also taken the time to play Ace Combat 4 and 5, so I am ready for 7. But that was a while back, like months ago. I have played Onimusha, funnily enough. The one that's being remastered. I, I was like 3 hours into that game thinking, I might do a video on this one. Then they announced the remaster, so... <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that one instead. And Senran Kagura, it's Senran Kagura, they're usually pretty good, and considering that the PC version is just going to be the out and out better one, thanks to the fact that the PS4 version outright removes a mode that they were absolutely fine with before, fuckers, the, yeah, I'm going to be taking a look at that as well, so, yeah. If you want me to do Resident Evil 2 or Kingdom Hearts 3, making the note that I barely have any experience with, with those individual series... Leave a comment. I will listen to what you have to say. So there you go. This has been Blue Maxima. I will see you all on Monday. Hopefully for either v Tales of Vesperia or Catherine Classic. Yo, you ain't gonna get a tow in on this one. Bomb the hill, follow the arrows, and get...